Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Web Design Basics. In this episode, we are going to learn the very basics of forms. You can basically have uh, different pieces of input that go together to make up a form, and then you can handle the data that you get from that form. So for example, a login form, which would have a username and password, or a registration form, which would have your name, your username, your password, maybe a date of birth, all these different pieces of information. And then um, you can actually take the information and handle it as you wish using PHP. Um, the PHP series is going to start after this episode. I'll still continue showing off some design-related things, but uh, at this point you know the basics of making a website, so we can start looking at uh, dynamic things in a website and especially uh, handling forms is a big one. So here's the website open right now. I'm just gonna change this text because it's really big and we have a lot of uh, stuff on this page. So I'm just gonna quickly go over to this uh, big and instead of being 100, we'll just make it uh, 32. And we'll say that this is 32 pixels. So if I reload this, okay, now we have some room at the bottom so that we can put in our form. Okay. So to do a form, you want to go ahead and use the form tag. Now there are a couple of attributes that we're going to use, but not right now. That Those will come eventually. So within the form, you can put a bunch of different uh, pieces of input. So let's say that we're going to have one that allows you to log in. It's going to have a username field, and then it's going to have a password field, and then it's going to have a submit button. Uh, and if we had some code working, the submit button would obviously check to see if you typed your username and password correctly, and if it did, then it would log you in. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the input tag. Now there are other tags like button and whatnot, but input works for all different kinds of inputs, including buttons and text fields and whatever. So I kind of like it because it's nice and easy. So we're going to use input. Uh, the next thing that you want to put in is the type. These are all of the different types of input that you can possibly have. Um, obviously, text, which should be towards the bottom, this is the simplest version of an input, but there are other things too, like a URL input, a time input, a password input. These are all special kinds of text input uh, that allow for you know certain kinds of formatting, and web browsers will save the information accordingly. Like if you have a phone number, the browser can know that you're typing in a phone number, maybe it'll pull in a phone number saved in your contacts or whatnot. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and use text, because this is the username. Then we're going to give it a name and an ID, and we're just going to call these uh, username. This is so that when we handle the form information, we can differentiate between all the pieces of data. We're basically naming each uh, field, each piece of data in the form, so that when we get the data, we can know that this piece of data came from the username field, and this piece of data came from the password field, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the last thing that we are going to do is you can also specify a placeholder, let's say username, and that is the data that will come, uh, that's what will show up in the gray ghost text when there's nothing uh, there. So it'll just say username, and once you type something in, the username will go away. And, okay, I just put this little ending slash because... We're ending the input tag, and now we'll go ahead and make one for the password. So this type is going to be password. The difference between text and password is password changes all of the characters you enter into the bullet points. So it still works the same way, it just uh, looks a little bit different. So we're going to name this password. Uh, we're going to name the ID password. And you can actually have a placeholder in a password field. And all right. Now let's go ahead and reload, and you'll see that our username and password showed up. Uh, username, we can go ahead and enter, and as soon as I type text in, that gray username stuff goes away. Then in password, if I type in password, you'll see that everything is a dot, so it's nice and uh, 
obfuscated or it's it's you can't see it directly. The last thing that we need, uh, and I almost forgot, is a submit button. So we're going to say input type is equal to. Now there is a button option, but we're actually going to use the submit option because the submit option is for a special kind of button that submits the form. So the name, the type is going to be submit, uh, and the name. If I think if you don't give it a name, the default name is submit, but we'll just say log in. Log. I never know if it's one word or two words, so log in. And that's all we need there. So now if we go ahead and reload, you'll see that the submit button shows up. So if I type in some information and I hit submit, it will reload this page because currently the form uh, isn't actually doing anything. One last thing, if you want to put these things on their own lines, you should be able to just add in a line break just like that. So in between each of the things, I am adding in a line break. So now, uh, username has its own line, password has its own line, and submit has its own line. And if we want, we could even separate this from, from our table. And there we go. So we have our nice form with our username, our password, and our submit. Now, obviously, this doesn't do anything. Uh, but once we start working with PHP, we're going to actually make this form do something. There are two um, attributes, which are the method attribute and the action attribute. So we can actually you know, send off the data to a PHP script that will evaluate the data. And in this case, it would check to see if your username and password are correct. If it is, then it would log you in. If not, it would probably show you an alert that it did not work. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more website development. Bye for now.